the way you uh, uh, papa you know papa <laughs> what you used to fan mm. uh, 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 charcoal mm. <laughs> you, right. you, you've seen it before. right when you fan it then I, I, the charcoal bright red this is a, uh, it's, then it's you a come for accountability <laughs> <laughs> you fan government's charcoal it's, it's, it's bright it's, red it's a call for accountability i enjoy it johnny first and foremost let me take this opportunity of course i've been seeing you for quite some time you are doing a very good job for the mother ghana remain undaunted this our society right. and it will take me and you mm. to do it. that's why i always watch johnny's bite <laughs> the general watches johnny's yes, bite very, every day thank I you very much and Before. i is devoid of insults mm -hmm. but straight to the point mm. factual and fearless Rahim. Charlie, no be joke. You know, the be pressure joke. people like Johnny can give you. No, no, you know, get gray hair, you get gray hair. I'm innocent, and <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That the pressure Johnny and his people, mm -hmm. the pressure they can give you, you know, get gray hair, you go get. So, your best bet is not mm. to have hair. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the dead, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning and welcome to Johnny's Bite. Today is Wednesday. It's the day Nanado Dankwe Kufuado was born. Same day I was born, so we are both Kweku. We'll get to that, but congratulations to the Ghana Black Stars. Yesterday, they did us great and proud. The nation is happy, everybody is jubilant. We are all excited. Congratulations to Coach, uh, Coach uh, Ado and, and all the team, everybody else, Kelt Ukweku, a minister for sports. In fact, when you didn't do as good at the AFCON, I came for you. So now you have done as well. You have shown us that you are capable, you are competent, that you are taking us to Qatar. We hope that this continues, that you continue to win and make us proud. So congratulations to you, Ghana Black Stars. We love you and we celebrate you on this great day. Congratulations to you. Now, yesterday, we'll get into Parliament right now. Yesterday, the controversial e-levy was passed. And you know that the minority staged a walkout. In fact, yesterday, while we were here on the news review segment, the big issues, Honorable Mutala Mohammed, MP for Tamale Central, had, had occasion to ask him why he had not joined the president to uh, launch or commission the first phase of the Tamale interchange. And he said, well, they had indication or they suspected, that, that was the word he suspected, that the e-levy was going to be laid in parliament yesterday which means that they were aware. They had gotten wind of something. They had gotten wind of what was going to happen in Parliament, which is why he didn't join, which is why Honorable Suhini didn't join, which is why Honorable Harun Idrisu Tamale sent the South MP didn't join, which is why Honorable Adia Fusini didn't join. They all knew what was going to happen, so they stayed in the chamber, they stayed in Accra irrespective of the fact that something was going to be happening uh, well in their constituencies or something that would be beneficial to their constituencies. And they had indicated that, well, the program had been set for last Saturday or if uh, that Saturday that's uh, uh, coming up. But then, for some strange reason, it was planned as a birthday gift for the president. I don't know about that. But you would see MPP communicators now saying it's a birthday gift. Black Stars win. It's a birthday gift. The Tamale Institute is a birthday gift. E-Levy is a birthday gift. The controversial E-Levy, if you listen to the numerous uh, theming Ghanaians, they are not happy about it. So in Parliament, we have always had the impression that one side is happy to impose the E-Levy on Ghanaians and the other side is unhappy about the imposition of the E-Levy. Well, it's been passed. But the question I want to ask the minority this morning is, why did they stay the walk out? Why? Why did you walk out? You could have been there irrespective of your disagreement with the E-Levy and let the record show that you voted against the E-Levy. You could have called for a head count. You could have called for a division, but you chose to walk out. Why? And all along, you had carried your supporters and many other Ghanaians who are not even your supporters along and told them, 
eh, and told them that you don't support the e-levy and that you will stay and fight, literally, till the very end and see that it is not passed. But you chose to walk out yesterday. Now you are running to the Supreme Court to go and do what? Seek interpretation. When the horse has bolted, you are now chasing it. Your supporters are not happy with you, I'm telling you this morning. If you are not aware, your supporters and the people who hoped that you would have done them good are not happy with you. And you are talking about what? Unconstitutionality, illegality, blah, 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 yada, 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 yada. You were in parliament yesterday. The majority did not have the full complement of their membership. You know that? Chief Tenzin Minister was not there. Honorable Ajua Safu was not there. Speaker Bagbin was presiding. So the excuse of Joseph eh, Wusu and MP Formina eh, and all what brought about the brawl is not an excuse anymore. So all these dramatics that you're putting up, it doesn't wash for the people. Why did you walk out? The streets are, su are suspecting and are alleging that you might have taken some money. Did you take money? That's what the streets are saying. They say you took some bit of money, inducement. Like President Akufo, they will say money under the table is sweet. Did you take money? If you didn't take money, come and speak. But why did you walk out? There are many things you disagree with, but you stay in the chamber and vote and let the records reflect that you indeed have voted against it. You walked out. When the majority walked out on its own budget, you made a case out of it. Did you get the tacit approval of your constituents to walk out on this occasion? Because you are not there on your own. You are there to represent the people. And the people had wanted you to be there to insist on what the people want. You walked out on the people. You walked out on the people. You walked out on the authority and the power bestowed upon you by the people. I come to the majority leader. I'm sorry, sir, but yesterday, while the minority were walking out, you were hurriedly asking the speaker to put the question. You actually shelved your part of the debate, your submission. You shelved it because you wanted the, the speaker to put the question because you, you, and you were heard by the whole country that they are still in the chamber. Put the question. They are still in the chamber. Put the question. What was the rush for? 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 That if E. Levy doesn't come, and then he pulled the, pull the uh, what do you call it, the, the links for me. The argument that has been made about the E. Levy, and the, minor, the minority has questions to answer. Why did you walk out? Have you taken money? Did you agree silently with the majority that this was going to pass? Because earlier, your leader had proposed a 1% what you call threshold. From 1.75, 1%, your, your side came to say it is not your, uh, your, your, your total decision and that you didn't agree with the E-Levy at all because when you wanted compromise, the majority didn't come to the center for a compromise. Now we said we're going to do town hall meetings, right? We did Accra, we did Western Region, we did Tamale, we did uh, uh, Upper West Region, we did Kufuidia, we did Ho. So we have done about six of the town hall meetings, correct? And we were told that the town hall meetings are supposed to uh, engender confidence, win back the trust, and get people to appreciate and understand the concept of the E-Levy before the E-Levy will be passed. But here was the majority leader in parliament insisting and, and screaming at top of his lungs that the E-Levy e must be passed. Mr. Speaker, put the question. They are still in the chamber. Mr. Speaker, put the question. They are still in the chamber. So you have done six, six regions. What about the other 10? There are 10 regions in the country. Are you suggesting to us that the other 10 regions are not as important, that they don't need to understand the concept of the E-Levy? Because that's what you told us. You told us that you were doing these town hall meetings to make the people, bring the people up to speed on the whole concept because ev nearly everybody doesn't agree with you on the E-Levy because they think that you have mismanaged their economy, you have wasted resources, you are still wasting resources, you are not being accountable to the people and you are asking for more money. So now you have done six of those town hall meetings. What happens to the other 10 regions? Because these town hall meetings essentially had, had to have happened earlier before the 17th of November 2021 when you read the budget for 2022. 
You people take the people for granted. You forget that the constitution, the preamble of the constitution says that power emanates from the people. We give you power. Now you have passed the E-Levy. The president will ascend to it. Mr. President, I'll show you what some of your appointees are saying. This is, uh, what do you call him? Former Free Zones Board. He's a member of parliament. It says, E-Levy, free SHS will be cancelled if we go to IMF. MPP, MP alleges. And he's, he spoke this to, to constituent. Play the video for me, Danny. World Bank and I say IMF. See a cock of In your court here now, I'm going to get to say. Three senior high school culture. Munina, Mamma, I'm a real school, I'm a school, I'm a school. Sansa, wait a moment, you're just quackle. Mr. Mouchafo, make me a member of parliament. Many endings before the parliament. There be I parliament. MPP Telling them that E levy, if not passed, free SHS will not happen. You remember that we had been told that salaries will not be able, will not be paid if the E levy is not passed. You remember that? We were told that the same people who said salaries will not be paid had paid their January salaries, paid February salaries, and we are waiting for March salaries. So this is pure blackmail. But this is Mr. Keno Foriata. E-levy revenue will lead to jobs for by 11 million people. Foriata, finance minister. So we want to believe that now E-levy has been passed. Free SHS is guaranteed. No review. No adjustment. No looking at, as was said, after the PDRC meeting. Two, 11 million jobs are guaranteed now that E-levy has been passed. And we will refer to these things until, until such a time when there's nothing more to refer to. Salaries will not be paid. This is it. Now, E-Levy to enable government to invest in security, interior minister. All these arguments were made. So, Mr. Ambrose Derry, we will refer to this. And whenever there's a problem with our security in terms of uh, what you're giving them, uh, resources and all of that, we'll ask you those questions as to whether the E-Levy indeed was the panacea to all our problems. E-Levy has become our new abonniquet. A great minister makes case for E-Levy, says part of it will be used to support farmers. Today, today, we can't find fertilizer for the farmers. And you know the crop season is coming. We can't find the improved seedlings. We can't find fertilizer for them. We are asking them to use chicken poop to go and plant our food. When we are going to take syndicated loan for the cocoa farmers, the cocoa farmers are not happy. They are selling their farms. The PBCs are not happy. We have borrowed money in their name. And this is a box of cocoa behind the, the minister. Go to the market. Check the availability of food and check how much food costs these days. We'll stay on the food argument, but I want to show you this last one. Road contractors will be paid outstanding debts if E-Levy is passed, Roads minister. So it means that now that we have passed E-Levy, this problem is also solved. I will come to it. Danny, play for me the video of President Akufuado uh, at the Sona last year telling us that Ghana is a net exporter of food. He said Ghana is a net exporter of food, that we don't import food. We have been told how we are importing cassava from China. Play the video for me. In 2017, it appeared to some like the same old refrain when we said farmers and agriculture would get the highest priority. But we can see the difference it makes when a government treats farmers with respect and spends resources and expertise on agriculture. We have seen the dramatic turnaround of our agricultural fortunes due to the progressive policies 
that have improved the living standards of farmers in the country. The excellently executed policy for planting for food and jobs has laid the foundation for the agricultural transformation of our country. We are able to say that our country is now a net exporter of food and we no longer have to import basic foods like plantain and tomatoes. Mr. Speaker, Ghana rice is the preferred choice in an increasing number of our homes as the growing, processing, and packaging. Mr. President, today you are addressing Parliament in accordance with Article 67 of our Constitution, better late than never, because Parliament has had more than 20, 20 sittings, more than 20. You are late. You are as late as when you wanted to appoint your MMDCs. You broke, you disrespected Article 936, Act 936, sorry. The local government, you did, there's no, I've read it from cover to cover. You're a lawyer. I am not. But the simple English there suggested that you, you disrespected the law. And you said you were going to give us quality. We saw the fights they were fighting. We saw them, the, the, the brawl. So, Mr. President, today as you go to address Parliament... And everybody who matters in this country will be in that chamber. I want you to correct this mistake that you put out yesterday, last year. Because the chamber of our Greek, the peasant farmers, everybody has been telling you that somebody at the Greek ministry is not telling you the truth. Those who put, I keep telling you, Mr. President, those who write your speeches, they keep lying to you. They made you, recently they made you come to read to us that pubs and nightclubs and beaches are now, clo that are now opened. They were never closed though. They were never, there are people close to you who own places. They were opened. They were never closed. Those places were never closed. Check, Mr. President. So maybe it's time you fire your speechwriters because they, first they wrote for you plagiarized speeches. Now they are putting lies in your speeches and you are repeating them. You need to check it, Mr. President. So today when you go to parliament, you need to be telling the people of Ghana, that we are indeed importing food because we import tomatoes, we import onions, we import nearly everything. And you know, Mr. President, that we put a ban on the exportation of food, cereals, in this country. Your Greek minister said it, his deputy. So you need to go and correct this mistake in Parliament today, respectfully, Mr. President. You just turned 78 yesterday. I told you about the grandpa scenario yesterday. I beg you, please correct it. And while you're at it, Mr. Kenofriata says one e levy is passed. We'll get 11 million jobs for people. NAPCO is waiting. NSS, they are waiting for their uh, baggage of allowances that have not been paid. The nurses who have written their licensure sat for the exam and are waiting to be uh, giving appointments. They are at home. The teachers who have also done their licensure, written their exam, they have their certificates, they've done their national service. All the cumbersome processes have been, have been okayed and they, they still don't have jobs. Young people in this country, Mr. President, you promised them ahead of the 2020 election that they were going to pay their rent for them. Rent allowance. You remember that, Mr. President? The state of the nation, there, there are numerous things that you need to be addressing today because the country is in a very bad place, as you said last year. Nothing seems to have changed. But we are happy that the e levy has been passed. And we're told that it is the panacea for everything. But, Mr. President, I leave you with this one. You see, yesterday you called Coach uh, uh, Ado, you called him, you congratulated him, and even told him that you will kidnap him if he gets here, he won't get to Dortmund, because you appreciate what he did, you saw it as a birthday gift. But you know the secret ingredient in Coach Otoado's uh, win? He did substitution. You have refused to substitute your team. Those who are doing you nya, you are not substituting them, you are keeping them, and they continue to do you nya. You have better players on the bench. Sack those players on the, substitute them, sack them. Because they are, they are, we have seen your team A. They have not won anything for you. Bring your team B, Mr. President. I wish you well today. Good morning. Remain undaunted. This is our society. Correct. And it will take me and you to do it. That's why I always watch Johnny's Bite. <laughs> the general watches Johnny's yes, Bite. Very, every day. Thank I you very much. And I is devoid of insults, mm -hmm. but straight to the point. Mm -hmm. Factual, 
I'm fearless. Rahim. Hey, Charlie, no be joke. Oh. You know, the be pressure joke. people like Johnny can give you. No, no. You know, get gray hair. You I'm, get gray I'm, hair. I'm innocent.